Hello, this is another haul video. I have just had my 21st birthday about two weeks ago and um, I've got a load of stuff from family, friends, you know, a whole mix of people who bought me art supplies so I thought I'd share them with everyone. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So I'll start with the big items. Um, the first thing is this De La Rowney uh, watercolour paper. Um, I've wanted to try out some new techniques like watercolour pouring. If, you'd, if you've watched some of my live streams you will see me doing the watercolour pouring. Um, and so I got this um, from Hobbycraft. Uh, it's hot pressed paper so it's really nice and smooth. Um, yeah not much to say I've tried it already um, yeah it's quite nice to work on really um, allows a lot of water on the paper as it's watercolour paper but yes so that's the first thing um, second thing is this is not really art related it's more for my videos I got one of these camera tripods so I can do some more close-up shots that you know, hopefully it'll focus on more of the um, focus on more of the art rather than the background because that seems to be what happens with this camera. But yeah, bends, stands up. I can do close-up shots, so hopefully there'll be a lot more of those in my videos in the future. Okay, back onto art stuff. So, um. I work with acrylics quite often, I've always worked with acrylics and a couple of my acrylics actually dried out and so I ordered, well, my mum ordered some paints for me um, just to replace some of my dried out ones so there's, um, I usually get Windsor & Newton gallery acrylics uh, so I got a burnt umber because that ran out, well it didn't run out, it really dried up, like I, it was quite hard, so I got this, and they're in these new tubes now, they used to be in, um, do you know, the metal tubes, which I didn't really like, these I can at least get as much paint out as possible and they won't crack in the corners, do you know, causing the paint to burst and everything, so yeah, burnt umber, um, cadmium yellow, medium hue, um, and this, so those two dried up, that's why I've got replacements for those. Um, I had a sap green and I can't remember what the other green was, but they were very, one was a bluey green and one was a very, like, yellowy, no, not really yellowy green. I think the other one was quite a bluey green as well. So I got this, um, permanent green light. It's quite a bright colour. But I thought I could do a lot more with this colour than the bluey green colours. Um, yeah, so they're my three acrylics. So I'm excited to do some acrylic paintings. I'm hoping to do um, some paintings on my easel. So there should be a video coming up in a couple of weeks with that, hopefully. Um, yes, yeah, so back onto watercolours. Um, the pouring, I don't know if anyone who watches this knows what watercolour pouring is but I did some research and basically you use the primary colours and you water these watercolours down and then pour it onto your watercolour paper and allow it to kind of like saturate the paper and then run off and create its own kind of like blends of colour and things like that um, I have an example I can show in a second um, but yeah so I got some refills because I just I had kind of like cheap watercolors and I thought get some you know, proper proper stuff to make it work better in a way hopefully so um, Windsor and Newton their Cotman watercolor range so I got um, cadmium red hue um, cadmium yellow hue and cobalt blue hue. So they're the three 
primary colours, so I'll be doing some of that watercolour pouring with those. Uh, watercolours again, I got a Travel Cotman watercolour palette pocket box thing, <laughs> um, which I think is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, really tiny, you get um, 12 colours, so there is lemon yellow hue, cadmium yellow hue, cadmium red pale hue, alizarin crimson hue, ultramarine intense blue, white, Chinese white, burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, sap green and viridian hue. So it's quite a nice mix of colours. Um, yeah, and oh, it also comes with, so it's quite travel, well, it's meant to be a travel kit, so I can take this around with me anywhere, I can do what colours, and it also comes with this cute, this cute, um, let's get this to focus, shall we? There we go. This cute travel watercolour brush, so it's really tiny. And as you saw, well, you can make it into a longer brush by putting the end on it. So that's a nice long brush. And it fits into the travel kit really tiny, like that. So it's quite cute. And it just fits in there. And you can travel it around with me. So quite a nice half pan watercolour travel kit. So that was quite nice. Um, uh, oh, watercolours again. I got some masking fluid, not like um, an expensive because I was just trying it out and I thought for my watercolour pouring it'd be nice to have some masking fluid in case I want to keep things perfectly white or it's easier to mask something, do the background and then paint in the actual painting. So I got this Frisk Art and Materials Artist Blue Masking Fluid. So I got the blue because I thought it's easier to show up as well. Um, so yeah, I'll paint some on to something, to this, and then leave it a bit and then in a minute I'll peel it off so you can see. Um, but yeah, basically, it's a latex, latex based one this, so it stinks, but <laughs> um, basically, say I want something masking out, I paint the masking fluid on. like that and allow it to dry and then when it's dry you peel it off but I'll allow that to dry for a second so um, the watercolours I wanted to get something to make sure that if any water went on them they didn't run and then ruin the painting that I've done so I got some De La Roni poster and watercolour varnish this stuff's amazing like I've used it on a couple of things and it's it leaves a really nice thick glossy sheen to any of the paintings that I've done in watercolours so it's really really nice um, I would recommend this actually um, yeah it's quite nice <laughs> that's all I can really say about it I'll demonstrate stuff in my videos when you see them so you'll see a couple coming up ones I've used a couple okay so um for painting I want I've always wanted a a what do you call them a spray sp spray gun what what are they called you know what I mean <laughs> I hope one of those um spray things so you can you can either put paint in them or marker and you spray the ink or the paint onto the paper spray guns, I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. <laughs> anyway, I've always wanted one of those but they're always quite expensive and I thought you know, I just want to try something out so I got what people on the internet were calling a poor man's spray gun um, and it's a spray diffuser so you, it looks like this and basically when you want to use it you open it at 90 degrees like that you put this part into whatever you're wanting to spray, so paint preferably, um, you put that in that and then you 
blow through this part and what it does is it sprays the paint through this and it's not a very even spray it's kind of quite how do you say it oh, it's quite a splatter in one area and then a disperse outwards it's not a very dispersed spray everywhere it's got a condensed point and then it sprays out from that so I'll do a demonstration in a second after I've gone through everything else but it's quite it's it's a reason that it's you know the poor man's version it's not very it's not great but it's good for the job it depends what you're wanting to really do so uh, if anyone got one of these I'd suggest practicing with it because I almost ruined some of my work doing this so yeah I'd practice with it but I'll do a demonstration in a second and you can see what that's all about. Okay, um, on from that, I've been, as you know, I do doodles and I wanted to try out different inks and not just use pens, if you know what I mean. So I was bought from different people, so I've got five in total, um, five in total, but from different people so I got these Liquitex inks which are actually acrylic based um, made in France um, let's get these all out um, yeah these Liquitex acrylic based inks and I thought because I have I already have drawing inks and a Windsor Newton type ink and I thought I'd try these because they looked quite interesting and the colors looked so vibrant and just really really nice colours uh, in the selection so let me get all these out and then I'll show you the colours okay so okay so I really really obviously black is the main colour I'm going to use in inks so I got carbon black um, yeah it's basically just like black ink let me open this and see if I've got the strength okay so it's basically like black ink I would say it's a mm, I wouldn't say it's a tad thicker the, the black isn't anyway uh, it's about the same but let's have a look yeah, you can see it's um, it's very opaque. There's no kind of like white coming through there. That is laid on quite thick. Let me get another paintbrush and see what we can do here. Okay, so let's use this paintbrush. Okay, so black ink. I can spread it quite a lot and after a while it does show through the um, it does show through the paper but you can see how you can lay it on over the top and you can get different gradients of colour you can move it like paint almost but it's actually in an ink so yeah it's quite nice that I think anyway um, yeah that's so that's the black one um, and I'll show you the other colours now Let me just wash this brush out okay so that's black uh, I haven't tried the others yet um, so white I thought would be a good a good colour it's titanium white um, so I thought white would be a good colour for doing highlights you know, just adding something a little bit different to you know whatever I'm doing with a doodles painting I can overlay it because it's acrylic based I can overlay it over my acrylic paintings perhaps anything that's why I thought acrylic based inks would be a really good try um, yeah so let's try this out okay so again I would say this is about maybe the tiniest little bit thicker than um than uh inks get my words out uh, let's try it here ok 
Okay, so let's try this. So again, oh, that's mixed with the black. One second. Um. So you can actually water these down with water to create a thinner consistency or you can just use them as they are but again it, it's quite similar to the black if you leave it thick it will stay black and if you th move it around it will go a bit thinner let's just try it over the black and see how well it does so you can see how it's not mixing in with that black at all it's completely contrasting and yeah I would say that's actually really that's better than I expected actually even when I thin it out, it still overlays over that black, it doesn't disappear. Well, that's good. I like that. Okay, we'll see what it's like when it dries, maybe. Maybe it'll show through a bit of the black, not sure. Okay, so I've I've always liked metallic colours in inks, but with like Windsor and Newton inks and stuff, the colours actually separate. And I don't find that very good, but these acrylic based inks I've used this copper one quite a bit um, but with these acrylic based inks they're actually they're actually really good they're, they're a lot thicker than ink I would say the metallics a lot thicker than the other inks and a lot lot thicker than the normal inks like Windsor Newton inks and such um, so I've got iridescent iridescent rich copper iridescent bright gold and iridescent bright silver so I thought they were the best colors to get in metallic I think when when I look at colors other colors they do I think these are the best I think they do a bronze color as well oh, I'm not sure anyway let's try these out so copper first so as you can see it's I would say that's a lot thicker focus I would say that is a lot thicker yeah uh, yeah I've used this quite a bit actually I've gone down about half well I didn't think I'd use that much anyway um, so this is the copper really really like this so again it's thick move it around and you see more of the paper through it it's much, it's much like, I don't know if you ever use those um, metallic glitter pen, glitter pen sort of thing, where when you, glitter paint pens, um, where when you put them on you could see the glitter through, it kind of showed the paper through when you pushed it quite thinly, it kind of does that when you move it around, but it will overlay over again the black. I'll bring this up a bit closer, but it does overlay over the black, and I actually previously mixed it with a bit of black, and it creates this kind of like glittery, dark black colour. It's quite nice. Um, so, let's see if we can get this. Oh, there you go. You can see the like shiny sheen to the copper, and you can see how it overlays over that black as well as the white as well. So I think that's quite good. So I'm assuming the gold and the silver act similar. Okay, so gold. Actually, I think that copper might be thicker than the gold. Yeah, a tiny bit. Um, yeah, so gold. And we'll do silver at the same time. Silver. They're very, very rich in colour. Yeah, very rich in colour. I'm very amazed actually. Yeah, the gold goes over the black. The silver also goes over the black. So, to show you that. So, that's it's a bit wet at the moment, but you can basically see the shininess in it. You can see like the when you build up the color it kind of creates that like puddling effect i kind of like that it's quite nice so yeah um i'll show you again when it's dry so you can see the shininess of it a bit more 
but you can see how it overlays over that black quite well. So there's the silver and there's the gold. It's quite good I think. Yeah, so I'm quite happy with those. It's quite nice. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, okay, so that's just hot glue sticks for my glue gun. Nothing special. <laughs> um, okay, so I got some just some cheap pipettes for refilling. Let's zoom it back out. For refilling my uh, colourless blender or, or also adding very camera cut off. Anyway, um, so I thought I'd get some cheap art pipettes. Um, as opposed to the art syringes because I just thought I'd rather just pip it in than faff around with art syringes at the moment because um, I don't really do much refilling because I mainly use the pro markers so they don't actually have refills like Copics do and so I don't really own any refills and I'd just be refilling it with colourless blender um, or maybe the odd Copic that I do have I might refill in the future but so you know, yeah, I just got these and I thought it'd be good for maybe doing painting with or something as well. So I got five in a pack, so that's those. Um, okay, so again, the last thing with the watercolours is I got a mini uh, De La Rone watercolour paper. It's actually postcards. Um, and this one is cold pressed rather opposed to hot press so it's um, more of a textured paper um, and yeah so it's it's in a postcard size and then on the back of them is actually like the postcard layout so I can either use it as normal watercolour paper and just do small pieces on this or I can actually create postcards um, yeah so I can I can do that which is quite nice. I'm kind of excited to try these out. Um, yeah. Okay, so on to my, I won't say my main thing, but the, the stuff that I predominantly use in my videos are marker pens. So I got some new, okay, so I ordered pro markers online and they came and I was expecting the old Letraset brand pro markers but they actually came and they were Windsor Newton so I'm actually quite fortunate that I can finally try the Windsor Newton to see whether there are any differences and compare them. Um, as of yet I haven't found any differences other than the colour selection I found they in their new brush markers their colour selection is not the same as their flex markers and I'll explain that a little bit in a minute I'll just show you all these colours I got so I've got these this load here and they all come in individual baggies I don't know why it's kind of a bit of a waste of packaging but yeah okay so I'll get them all out of these baggies and then I'll show you the colours and test them out so let's get these out I've already got this gold paint everywhere. <laughs> okay, so I'll zoom in a little bit. Actually, let's put them aside. Okay, let me zoom in. Okay, so I I have, I'll even show you. I have let's zoom back out. <laughs> I have I thought I had quite a big selection. When I look at all my Pro Markers, it looks a huge selection. But when you see it on this chart, it's actually not that many. So as you can see, I have, oh, I've already filled this in by the way, but I hadn't, I had, wait, let's rephrase. I only had a couple of different greens and they weren't varying greens. They were kind of close together greens. So I didn't, it was kind of, uh, I think it was, it was like 
mainly this type of green, like a yellowy green. I didn't really have bluey greens very much, other than like kind of like these ones. So yeah, so greens I was low on, yellow I was low on, pinks I wasn't low on, but I was trying to search for a better tone for the lip colours. Um, so I wanted some red and some pink, um, and then blue, I wanted another kind of like a mid-range between this darker blue and these lighter blues. So yeah, you'll see now when I show you which colours I actually got. So um, for greens, I got this holly colour, which is, it's quite a dark colour. Um, this is what it's like. Zoom in. Okay, so it's quite a dark green. So I don't know if you can see that. It looks looks different on camera to me, but yeah, um, I got a darker tone green. As I said, I needed kind of like that bluey green or like a a darker green rather than the mid tones or the yellowy greens. Then I know I'm contradicting myself. <laughs> I got this bright green, and it's a yellow green. Yes, and it looks very bright. When I got all these colours, they did look a lot brighter than I was expecting them all to be. But they're actually quite good because they're good mid-range colours compared to what I had before. So. That's the bright green. I don't know if you can see those. Can you see those? Let's move this. Okay. Be a bit better. Okay, so that's the light green. So we'll move on to blues. So I got a dark blue, and it's called China Blue. Um, so that's what this is, China Blue, so as you can see it's kind of, it's kind of a, it's kind of a mid blue I would say, it's not like a dark dark blue but it's not a light blue, so like I said I needed kind of like a mid range, and um, so another mid range blue I got was this blue pearl, um, and that actually turns out a lot lighter than I was expecting, but it's still different. It's still like a, it's a light mid blue. I don't know how to explain it. It's not like a sky blue, but it's, it's um, it looks sky blue on the camera. It's not. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like white has been mixed with this china blue and that's the color you got. So yeah blue pearl okay so next uh, I'll go with yellow I the yellows I didn't really have any yellows other than summer sun and daffodil bloom and eggnog but they were kind of like it was either one extreme to the other either really really pale blue almost white or really 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 butter kind of colour butter blue butter blue, butter yellow, I'm talking about yellow here, <laughs> and um, so I got I got this colour, and on the chart online it looked different, so all these colours look a lot different than I thought they were going to look like anyway, um, so that's, I will suggest to anyone buying markers, I suggest you go and look at the markers first, um, because sometimes the online colour charts do not show what it actually is going to look like, it can be quite tricky, so I suggest doing that, but yeah, this is what this one looks like. So the lemon, it's not a buttery bright ye yellow, but it is a bright yellow. Hence the, do you know, colour of the pen. But, um, yeah, it's it's nice. I kind of like that. It's a good mid-range to what I already had. Um, moving on. Um, I Oh, orange. I didn't really, ha I have like three oranges and they're kind of, awful they're not very nice oranges i would say it's either a very very yellowy orange or quite a brownie orange so i didn't really have a good orange so i got a nice a bright orange color bright orange there we go it's quite bright um but 
for anything I want to do that is good colour I think it's a very good colour something very good to add, add to my collection I think anyway okay so as you will have seen in my recent video I actually have started running out of my skin tones so along with trying to find a good lip colour I was trying to find good skin tones as well um, but I hadn't at this point I hadn't found out that I was about to run out of my skin tones so I got this sunkissed pink colour um, which isn't really a good skin tone it's more it's a, it's more for the shading of the skin I would say anyway I wouldn't use it for some of my skin tone areas especially the lighter parts because it is quite a dark skin tone but it's it's good enough to add to my collection anyway um, and the next one is antique pink um, which I thought was an okay lip colour at the moment it's kind of dull rather than a bright red it's a dull red so yeah they're the pro markers that I ordered so following on from what I was saying about needing skin tones so this is after I found out my skin tones were running out I looked at flex markers and the flex markers that I usually use for my skin tones are um, light fawn and blush as the lightest parts my darker skin tones I have a, quite a lot of still but my lighter skin tones my light fawn especially was really running out and I tried to revive it a tiny bit try and get as most out of it as possible by adding colourless blender but it really is on its last drops of ink so I tried finding replacements and because Windsor & Newton have taken over the Letraset brand I found that people must be noticing that their new flex markers do not have the same colours I mean their new brush markers do not have the same colours as the flex markers so people must have been buying up this light fawn colour because I could not find it anywhere and so I found a website that sold flex markers but I couldn't really find the light fawn so I was trying to find colours that kind of when like kind of looks very similar to the light fawn but having tested them out they're not very the same but they I can still use them for something anyway so let's see I got this champagne colour um, and on the on the actual barrel the colour looks the same as the light fawn but when I put it on it turns out very very what's the colour, kind of like, uh, oh, I don't even know, it looks like the colour of my desk, <laughs> which is definitely not the skin tone I was hoping for, because the light fawn skin tone is this one here, and as you can see it's very very pale, it's almost like a off-white like almost peachy brown I can't really explain the colour but it's perfect for skin tones and this is definitely not it even though the barrel looks like it would be the same as the light farm so again I got another one and I knew this wouldn't be exactly the same but I thought I'd rather have a yellowier skin tone than a brownie one like this so this is the other colour lemon chiffon so again the barrel as you can see the barrels look almost identical in colour so you can't really trust the barrel this is a lesson <laughs> but this is very yellow well it's actually almost like colourless blender can you you can barely see it it's that it's that subtle but it's not subtle enough to be a skin tone <laughs> so I'm not really sure I can work with it maybe um, but yeah it's very very light it's almost like colourless blender so that's it for those I did want to maybe get some more yellowy skin tones in case I decided to do someone that had more yellowy Ugh. sorry again I think my camera battery's on its last legs anyway um, I don't know where it stopped filming but I was saying that I wanted some more yellowy 
tones in case I decide to do a person that has more yellowy tinted skin to the more orangey side of things. So um, I've got two two colours here, um, Buttercup and Pale Citrus, which you can see one's just slightly darker than the other. And for some reason, even though I looked at my list of colours before ordering, in case I already had some, I got Buttercup even though I already have it in a pro marker, which is weird, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So this is the Buttercup, it's quite a yellowy colour, um, yeah, it's actually a tad bit lighter, I would say, than the buttercup no actually it's a tad bit darker than the buttercup in pro markers so even though i've ordered the same color i think it is actually slightly different in the ink but that might just be because it was made at a different time or something anyway this pale citrus is a lot greenier greenier greener greener than i was expecting I don't know what I was expecting considering it's called citrus, but it's green, <laughs> a very off-white, well maybe more than off-white green, um, but yeah, I don't know if my camera's even picking that up as being green, strange, anyway, my it's raining outside so the light, light in here is poor. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's kind of like a very light green, which is good because I didn't have a light light green like that so yeah it's mm, I would say oh what is happening okay yeah, so camera did that again that's really annoying I hope it doesn't happen again so let's rush through the rest of this <laughs> um I don't remember what I was saying so anyway that was my attempt at trying to find a skin tone and it failed miserably because none of these colors I could ever use as a skin tone I don't think but anyway um back onto lips again it wasn't just lips, I thought I'd get another red and then another attempt at lips. So the red that I got was a molten red. You know, I never know if there's a, like a lipstick colour or something I have to get. But it's very, very, very vibrant. Like, I don't think I've ever seen such a vibrant red, but I love it. It's really nice red. I'm very pleased with that. And my lip colour... I got Rose Peach, which kind of kind of turns out more orangey, but I suppose peach. I don't know why I didn't think that would be orangey, but I think that's a good. It could be a good skin tone. That's a bit dry. Hmm, that's a bit drier than I thought it would be. Anyway, um, yeah, it's that's really dry actually. Okay, um. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a little bit more red, but maybe I should think about the fact that it's called Rose Peach. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's that colour. So that's it for my markers. Um, you may have seen me in my videos use um, Jelly Roll. So I got another replacement Jelly Roll just in case I might need it. I got it in white again, um, just because I thought you could never have enough je Jelly Rolls, especially in white. Um, the other things I got is you'll see me in my videos a lot using those Uni Posca white pens um, where it's like a paint pen and I got a replacement because mine's starting to, the nib's starting to get really fluffy and it's starting to be a bit dry and not have as much ink and it releases a lot more ink than I'd hope every time I squeeze it out. Um, so I got a replacement of that. I got another white one, but this one has an, a finer nib. So I'll take that out of the packaging. Um, so this has a lot finer nib, as you can see. So if I get my pen that I already had, or I'll just open this one. Um, Okay, so this is the original size nib. It's quite 
quite a thick nib and then this is the place the, not the replacement the fine nib that I got so as you can see that is a lot different so I thought I could do a lot more detail with this nib than uh, this fat nib uh, I don't want to try this fat nib out because it's new um, but yeah so I thought that's quite cool um, a thinner nibbed and then I thought considering I'm doing a lot of portraiture and I I might need to highlight colour on the faces the I got an ivory colour and in hindsight I wish I'd gotten something less yellowy but open this um, but it's it's an okay colour so that's the white there and then this is you can see how thick the original pen is compared to the fine nib but yeah that's the colour of that and you can see how these pens really overlay on marker pen really well like almost like there's no marker pen under there at all um, let's try on this ink let's see Oh yeah, it overlays on the ink really well as well. So yeah, that's um, that. That's uh, that's everything that I was bought and given money for that I bought myself as well. Um, yeah, so back on to the spritzer. We'll do the spritzer and this in one. So I'll create up a quick. Um, I'll create a quick watercolor mixture up and then we'll spray this on here and then we'll peel this off when it's dry okay be back in a second okay so i thought i'd do it with some windsor newton ink um so you can see the consistency of this ink compared to that acrylic ink as well so okay this is gonna might take me a while because i've done this once but basically you put this into your ink and you aim it at point the uh, 90 degrees if possible and you blow through the pipe and it should come out but you've got to give it quite a hard blow so there we go so you can see how it's kind of concentrated in one area and disperses um, around so you can see how it's dispersed all around here around here but then in the center it's kind of concentrated quite a bit and um, I love the sound that this makes it makes kind of like that nice whistling sound but um, yeah uh, this ink is getting everywhere already <laughs> uh, let's wash that out okay so right Let's blow on this, get this dry a bit quicker. Okay, so around it is dry. I'm just gonna dry off what's on the masking fluid so I don't get it all over my fingers. So, as you can see, where I painted this masking fluid on, it has protected the paper. Watercolours and inks will run off it because they, you know, they're quite thin and they don't but acrylics and stuff won't so if you try and peel this off if you've got a layer of thick acrylics over it it will crack the acrylics and kind of break off bits but with watercolors and inks it does work and what you do is once you've finished what you want to do and you want to peel this off you rub it like this and as you can see it just peels off and leaves you with a nice white piece of paper this is quite thin this part so that's why it's kind of like gone around it but there so you're left with that kind of effect which that's quite nice actually I might use that in a piece later on but yeah I suggest if you do use one of these and it's called a spirit what's it called what did I call it earlier whatever I called it earlier that's what it's called <laughs> um, so if you're gonna use this make sure you have covered everything in something whether it be toilet roll like I have kitchen roll 
cardboard, newspaper, anything because otherwise it will get absolutely everywhere and I would not advise you to be doing that and yeah so that's that um i've just showed you that i think that's everything so yeah i'm very thankful to everyone who bought me bits of art and crafty things and gave me money to go and buy some more stuff so yeah and i'll be using a lot more of this stuff in the future so please look out for my next videos and if you have any suggestions as to what i should do with some of these art supplies whether it's a technique or suggestions or anything just give me a comment and come and watch me on my live streams if you want to see what I might be working on next um, I could be having some new types of artwork like beading coming up on my live streams um, so please come and tune in um, and if you want to see more of my videos please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up if you like this video thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye bye just remembered here's the sheen of the inks there you go have a nice day!